Hi, this is episode three of MiGMAC's tutorial into Arduino programming. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at soldering techniques, building on our knowledge of Arduino programming, and we'll be using that knowledge to learn how to detect inputs. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, I strongly suggest you do. My producer just told me that I have a problem with continuity. Personally, I don't see there being any issue at all. What's the problem with it? People get too distracted by changes right. on the screen. Oh, okay. And, and just don't mm. pay attention right. to what's being said. Right, fair enough. You've really got to stop doing that. Right. Right. You can't do that. Well, okay then. If it helps, I'll keep an eye on it. Oh, good grief. So, Tim, um, it was good that you managed to get that heartbeat little LED. Yeah, yeah. first thing I got to do, which is great. Yeah. Now that Tim is familiar with the Arduino IDE, I want Tim to take a look at one of the example tutorials, which turns an LED on when a toggle switch is changed. Before we get onto that, yep. I'll get you to solder up some things. I've got the soldering iron here, a potentiometer, and a little switch. And of course, we've got the little LED on the Arduino. Uh, soldering time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, I was trying to teach you to do that, you guys. You just put it near your face because it's very sensitive. Yeah, yeah. And he said, "Oh, stick your hand, boys. Don't do that. <laughs> just wait for the melt. <laughs> the solder for melt. It's pretty fun." Please don't try that at home. So you're going to solder? Yep. They've stripped the plastic out off the off the wire. Yeah. There's two ways of doing it. You can either strip it that way. Yep. Which is good. Now this is solid core wire, yep. so it's pretty easy to just. Uh, yeah. What's the other way? Another way I tend to do is I melt the the plastic. Yep. sheath with the soldering on the bit of plastic yep. uh, and the metal and I just touch the, the soldering on that side that side and just pull it off with my fingers oh okay so it melts it just enough to, to pull off Never done that before. There you go. it's good for multi-core wire so multi-core wire is when you've got strands yeah a whole yep. lot of strands yeah. in it yeah. cutting it with the pliers will tend to cut some of the wire yes I yeah. invariably do that <laughs> yeah which is you know you get a wire strip of that I, yeah. I still haven't bought one because it's pretty expensive anyway all right so all right. let's see if it's, uh, this <clears throat> soldering iron is hot enough to melt the solder first yep Perfect. Right. Look at that. All right. Normally, I usually get some helping hands. Yeah, they're in here somewhere. Oh, right. I do, but I don't know where they are. All right. That's <laughs> right. We'll manage. I've managed quite okay. All right. So, okay. so this process, yeah, as you probably know, is, is tinning. Yeah. Tinning the wire. So you've got a bit of copper. You just want to smother the solder on the end of the wire to to tin tin the end. Okay. I can feel the wire get nice and warm. And usually, you'll have to do the same thing to the switch as well. Okay. <clears throat> It's a real art, uh, soldering. Oh, I love soldering. It's just the one time between, you know, mucking around that you have to be still and patient. Yes, yes. Which is what I like. Oh, beautiful, look at that. I've got to say, when that. it comes to, <coughs> like, switches, good quality contacts that take the solder really quickly, oh, mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. If you have old stuff that sort of oxidizes, it takes ages to... Yeah, that's right. That's I right. think that'll do. Okay. Yeah. So do you want me to hold the switch? Oh yeah, thanks mate. I'll try not to burn your hand. Here we go. I'll just yelp. When okay. You... you can see that the plastic's retracted a bit when I heat it up there. Yeah, that's right. So I maybe didn't need to strip back so much. Perfect. Thank you. <coughs> Alright, cut the other end. Yeah. Uh, so if you strip the plastic off. I'll do less this time. Yeah, there's a third way of doing it. Yeah, on oh, the melting away. <laughs> With your teeth. Oh yeah, I have done that once. I, I, um, I think I swallowed the uh, plastic. <laughs> uh, don't worry about tinning it this time. Oh, okay, yep. Uh, so we'll just chuck it straight in the breadboard. Okay. Now I've got to find the breadboard. Where is the breadboard? Okay, so Tim. Yes. I've got you a breadboard. Oh, thanks, Mick. Uh, a tiny little one. It's, you won't need a, a big one. Just something tiny, just so you can do some prototyping. Can I open it now? Or? Sure. Yeah. Sweet. It's like, it's like Christmas Day. Oh no. My breadboard. It's pretty good. Yeah. And your teensy. Ah, oh, sweet. And also your, your two uh, headers. Okay, MK2. The official, the official name for it. Real deal. Can I ask what these things are for? It allows you to to um, oh. uh, attach more. Like I said, there's holes on the other side here, so you can yeah. daisy chain them or something. That's, yeah, okay. yeah. Great. So the next thing, uh, we should solder the headers. I've got to solder this. Yeah, you need to solder the uh, headers yeah. onto the, the back of the teens. I can do that for you. Yeah, yep. so okay. that one. Yeah. Okay, great. So it's <laughs> like. So the short bits at the top, that's and the right. bits stick on the bottom. The header block doesn't extend all the way through, but that's right. you Maybe won't need that. any inputs. Okay. Yeah. So the best way to solder is yeah. to chuck that into the breadboard. Yep. Look at that. It's like holding it still. Oh, do yeah. I? Uh... Yeah. Chuck the other one in. Yep. As well. Okay. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. So then you okay. just go along and solder. Probably the best way is to, is to is uh, to 
start soldering in a slant. So when you come in with a soldering iron, yep. you're coming in there from uh, that side with the solder, yep. the soldering iron, and then this side with the solder. Yeah, so hit so through, opposite, hit opposite through the pin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a technique to it. So you want to put the soldering iron and heat the pad and the pin at the same time. How's that? Does it look all right? Yeah, it looks all right. It's a bit frosty, but yeah. Okay, let's keep going. If you don't apply enough heat, then you end up with a cold solder, which means that the solder doesn't bind to the uh, the metal. It's fragile, brittle, it's fragile. It can cause a lot of issues. Are these boards like heat, like, you know, if I put the soldering on for too long, will it burn something? The ICs generally can't handle too much heat, but most of these boards that you get go through what's called a wave soldering machine. They'll just be passed across a, a river of solder, basically. Uh, then there's the surface mount devices, which is another technique uh, altogether. Uh, look, All right. Everything's sort of not touching each other, which is good. Right? That's good. Now we have everything soldered up. Let's plug it all into the breadboard. The first thing uh, I'll get you to do is to get this little switch that you soldered up and plug it into the Arduino. Okay. And be able to control the LED. Ah, oh, okay. When you flick it on, yep. I want you to turn the light on. When you flick it off, you're going to turn the light off. Okay, so, I need, to, so I need to program the Arduino to know what right. to do yeah. when the switch goes on and yeah. off. So you choose one of these ports and you attach one of the wires to one of the ports and then you attach the red wire to uh, VCC. This one here, the 3.3 volts. Now, theoretically, we're supposed to put a resistor on it. Okay. Theoretically, but uh, you don't really need to in this case. Okay. All right, so, uh, so pick a pick a port. Okay, so I've got these analog, all these A9, A9. Yeah. I can choose any of those. <laughs> you can choose one of those. And then that one above it, the 3.3. The red is VCC. And I can do it at the top here, right? Yep. Uh, okay, so it's going okay. And the next one just below is A9. All right. Okay, that seems to be it. Perfect. All right. I want to switch. So now we go to the laptop. Okay. You've got the Arduino ID up and running. Yep. Go to dig uh, examples, digital, yep. and then button. button. That's probably the best one. Yep. So if you scroll down, so in this example, first definition is button pin, which is yep. pin, in this case it's pin two, and LED pin, which is 11. So this is something that's already been done, uh, written for you. Okay. But those, those are my numbers might not be right because I've plugged into. That's right. Well, I'll plug, I'll plug the switch into 23. Yep. Yeah, so do I change this 2 to 23? <laughs> now, the L is the LED right? 13. Um, so we've got a TNT 3.0. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the on the manual here, it says LED is 13. Yep. And over here, it says, still says 13. Yep. So that should be right. That's fine. Yep, That's okay. Fine. So let's just run through the code. The first the first two statements outside of the, the comments, we've got button picks, LED pin. There's another variable called button state. So what that does is that records the current state of the button, yep. either on or off. Mm -hmm. So that's used in the, in the code further down. So we move on to the setup yep. uh, function. You'll see that defines LED pin as an output and button pin as an input. Yep, that's true. Yep. I am happy with that. All right, so moving on to the loop bit of the program. The first one. What do you reckon? Is it button one? state, digital read. So, <coughs> to, well, look for what's happening on that pin. Yeah, so digital read is just another function uh, of the Arduino IDE that reads our pin. So in case it's button pin, which you defined earlier on, mm -hmm. and it assigns that value to the variable. Uh, okay. So then we move down to uh, if button state equals high, high as a macro, then set the LED pin to high. What we're doing here is uh, it's command digital write as opposed to read. So okay. instead of just reading what the button's saying, we're saying do something to this pin. Correct. Make this pin high. Or, yeah. yeah, so apply 3.3 volt. Oh, so, 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 so high means 3.3 volts normally? Yes, oh. in this case with the Arduino, Arduino yes. Yeah, okay. We're connecting 3.3 volt power line to the to the input. Oh! Directly. 3.3 volts coming out. Yeah. Um, out of that, 3.3. Out of that, that red wire now, yep. Yeah. Without that red wire. And then when you've got that uh, closed when you got yep. the switch closed. It's going to send it to the, down the white it, wire. Down the white wire into, into the input. Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. Oh. I'm happy with that. Okay. And then it says, okay, if it's got, if you've got 3.3 volts or high on mm -hmm. the button circuit, yeah. Then put the light on. Else, put so, the pin low. That's right. Which is the that's same right. as off. I take yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's oh. let's give it a whirl. Eh? So how do I put this on the? You remember from last week? Uh, okay. Yeah. There's a download button. No, here we go. Look. Upload. Upload. Okay, yeah. just hit upload. Right. Yep, the upload. And there's a green bar, it's uploading, bap, bap, bap. Depending on the state of the switch, you should see it upload, and as soon as it reboots, see it either be on, on or off. Yep. Yeah. Reboot, now it's okay. solid. All right, so... Oh, does this work? Yeah, yeah, that's how it's worked. Um, 
So Sweet. the the standard Hello World um, program that was running on before. Which is the blink one, yeah, on, the one blink. second on, one yep. second off. It's mm -hmm. not happening anymore. Not happening more. So uh, we're assuming that, as you said before, yep. that the switch is on. Yep. So I don't know if you want to turn it off. Yep. Or okay, great. Off. So I can see that it looks like Going it's closed. That's, that's um, all right. So, and I want to hit it off. Mm. Yeah, what's going on here? It's a hot, is it? Oh, I know why. All right. Um, At this point, I suddenly realized I was making the wrong assumption about the Teensy. Do you remember this statement from earlier? Now, theoretically, we're supposed to put a resistor on it. Okay. So this is the problem. You'll, you'll notice that the LED is, is sort of going on and off. Yeah, it's flickering like, like a candle light, you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. So the input is floating because there's nothing pulling it up, nothing pulling it down. It's sort of floating in this, this sort of netherland. Oh, okay. So the Arduino code is still running and it'll either be occasionally up or occasionally down. So you can even, if even touching it, it might actually changes, changes, changes the... Just, yeah, changes the voltage. So we need to attach what's called a pull-up resistor. Got that? I think I got you. Yeah. But yeah. So can, can, before you go, can you just draw a quick diagram? Sure. Here? So what we want to do is we've got um, VCC, which is 3.3 volts, and then we've got a resistor, and then we've got your switch going to ground, and then from here that goes to the the input. So that means you've got the input always being pulled high because it's flowing from the res from the source to the input. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And then. By closing the switch, you're pulling it low. Because the current's going down here. The current's going down here, but then because um, this is a much lower resistance than this, yep. um, you're you're guaranteeing that this point is low. So here yeah, you're doing the wave thing. Here you draw a diagram of the wave. Yeah, sure. If you sort of draw voltage over time. Yep. When you've got a, an input pin that's floating, you've got a situation where the voltage will be moving up and down. Yep. Uh, so that means that within the Arduino, there's a... Threshold? A a, yeah, there's a threshold. If it reaches this point, then you're guaranteed to be low. Yeah, okay. If it's up here, uh, then it'll be guaranteed to be high. Yeah. So the, f the floating input will be floating up and down. And as you can see, you know, if I touch it, yeah. it all just... Yes, it sags it, below the line. Yeah, right. So, so let's go and get a resistor. This means a pull-up resistor is actually required. I always like to keep my videos as short as possible. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an easy break in the edits. Stay tuned as Tim learns how to decode resistor values and finally gets his program up and running. Mm -hmm.